Hi guys, and welcome back to Car Focus. Uh, today's video is gonna be really sort of informal, uh, really chilled, but we're driving. We're driving in the RS, finally. I've only done one video driving this car. Woohoo, when I first got it. I hope you can hear the sound of the induction and the exhaust, because I know, um, with the GoPro and the mic, sometimes you don't quite get the full experience. But yeah, I thought I'd come out for a drive um, before the rain sets in. It's gonna rain over the next week or so. We've had some really nice weather. I've been out in this car quite a lot recently, which has been nice. Loving the car, um, no regrets at all. But I thought in this video, uh, whilst having a chat, whilst having a bit of a blast, we'll talk about a question which I get asked a lot. Now that question is, do I, reg do I regret selling my Mark III Focus RS and buying this? And kind of, which do I prefer? What are the pros and cons of each one? Uh, blah, blah, blah. Now I've owned this car since October. So quite a while now, I suppose. I've, I've got a feel for the car. Granted, I didn't use it that much over the winter. Um, it was covered up and then I, one of my auxiliary belts snapped, so I couldn't use it then either, but it's now back on the road, it's up and running. Um, car's running sweet. Yes, boy. Um, so yeah, let's talk about it. So, do I miss my Mark III? Sorry, I've got a cyclist up ahead. This, oh my God. Does anybody else find cyclists like, really annoying? I don't know why. Anyway, so, this video is gonna be a bit like this, by the way, just me kind of not talking sometimes, having a bit of fun. Yeah, do I miss the Mark III? Well, the, the simple answer is no. I don't miss my Mark III. I don't have any regrets buying the Mark II. And that's pretty much it. End of video. No, I'm only joking. Now the Mark III, so, I love my Mark III. It was a great car. It was very capable. What the hell? Um, some guy letting pigeons out in the field there. Uh, it was very capable, had uh, nice mod cons, it was very sharp, it was pretty quick. It wasn't the fastest car in the world, but it was pretty quick, made quicker by the Dream Science bits that I had. Um, so, yeah, overall, it was a great car. But always at the back of my head, I've always had a yearning for a Mark II RS. Now you're probably thinking, well, why did you buy a Mark III? Why didn't you buy a Mark II? When I bought my Mark III, it was actually more financially viable for me to do that than buy one of these because you could get quite good PCP deals on the Mark III, whereas these cars, because they were at that sort of age where they weren't really doing PCP on them anymore, most sales were private or from small garages that only sort of did HP, it was just easier to get the Mark III. And I'd never had a, I'd never had a new car before, so I thought, sod it, I'm going to put my deposit down for the Mark III. It looks good, and we'll give it a go. So I did. I had the Mark III for two years. As I say, I really enjoyed it. But for a brand new car, it did have its fair share of issues, and it kind of puts a little bit of a bad taste in your mouth when you have problems. Like I had the clutch pedal stick into the floor quite a few times. Um, I had a hair in the paint. Um, my seat bolster wore through twice. I had it rear pulsed and it wore through again. Obviously the head gasket went. Um, the steering rack was knocking over bumps. Don't know if I've already mentioned that or not. Uh, the, the paint on the wheels was really soft so they'd get really scratched up. You know, just things like little things like that. And it was kind of annoying. And then I had my issues with the timing cover and all that sort of stuff, blah, blah, blah. Some of, some of it was, wasn't the car's fault, granted. So yeah, um, after two years, I decided to sell and I decided to chase that kind of dream that I had and buy the Mark II. Now, the Mark II isn't perfect, don't get me wrong. I'm not gonna sit here singing all the praises to the Mark II, it's amazing, blah, 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 because it isn't. It's, it's over 10 years old, it, it's got rattles, um, you know, it doesn't have refinements that a modern car would have. It's quite dated inside with the infotainment system and all that kind of thing. Um, but those things aside, 
I just love this car. I, it's like stepping back into a time warp, um, a good time warp. It's just a man and machine sort of experience. Like you hop in this thing, the only thing you can do is turn the traction control off, which I need to do now actually. Other than that, it's just you in the car. There's no, there's no like digital aids, so to speak. You've got the mechanical um, limited slip diff up front, which does a wicked job. So yeah, it's just a really raw experience. And the way the car looks, the way the car sounds, and just the way the car makes you feel, for me, is just something that the Mark III was lacking. I mean, the Mark III is a great looking car, but when you see it on the road, it, you, don't, you don't automatically think, wow, what the hell's that? Like, it's only when it gets up close that you realize it's an RS, unless you've got it in nitrous blue, obviously, and then it, it does kind of shout that it's an RS. But yeah, I just, for me, th this car, for me, is, is what I want out of a hot hatch. I'm a bit old school now. The older I get, the more I like the older stuff and the less I kind of like the newer stuff. And this, when this car first came out in 2009, I just absolutely loved it. I was obsessed with it. So for me to have it now, yeah, I don't regret it in the slightest. I need to make an overtake, so uh, just bear with me. The oil temperature uh, is up now, so it's good to be booted. Oh my God, this thing is just, oh, what I swear. But yeah, the sound this thing makes, if you take it all the way sort of up to 7,000 and beyond, when you change gear, you just get a boom, just a proper natural explosion of fuel. Whether that's a good thing, probably a bit of over fuel in there, but You've, got, you've really got to work for stuff in this car. You've got to work for enjoyment. It's, it's just really rewarding. Um, and in the Mark III, you could kind of just pin that thing anywhere and the car would do a lot of the work for you. shove of torque low down in the rev range with this car um, it does sort it does start to die off a bit at the top but that that low down torque it just shoves you in the back and the thing just goes and it, it scrabbles around a bit on the road but it it really does keep you on your toes you do get a bit of torque steer but it makes the whole experience just exciting and that's what I love about this car now what I will say about the mark 3 mark 2 thing um, don't buy a Mark II. If, if you if you want to change your Mark III to a Mark II, but your Mark III is your daily driver, then I think you're making the wrong the wrong switch. Like if you're if you're buying a Mark II to daily, I I don't think that's the right decision. For me, the Mark II is a car that you want to kind of stick away in the garage, you know, look after, cherish it a bit, and then take it out when you're off work, take it out weekends when it's nice weather. Because what's the point in taking this out in the rain? What, what's the point? It's front wheel drive. You've got 300 plus brake, brake horsepower going through the front wheels. It's, it's just not going to really be that fun, is it? It's going to be wheel spinning and, and that's where the Mark III trumps this. Ooh. Yeah, and, and these cars, they do require a bit of TLC now. So the chances are a couple of times throughout the year they probably will be off the road there'll be things that you want to replace you know renew or or maybe things that will break so having it as a daily yeah i probably wouldn't recommend it to be fair that's where the mark three does trump this as a, as a nice all-round daily car it's four-wheel drive you can use it in all weather conditions you know they're not at the stage where they're starting to rust now whereas these are they're starting to get a bit rusty on the arches and stuff like that and the underneath as well so you kind of want to get older one you want to use it as much as you can but not too much um, that it kind of ruins the ownership experience for you i mean this car for example what have i done i've, I've changed the auxiliary belts because they snapped because they, they needed renewing it's booked in for a cam belt and water pump um, at dream science on the 18th for peace of mind allegedly it was done from the garage i bought it from but i have no documentation to prove that so for peace of mind it's going to dream science for cam belt and water pump had the rear discs and pads changed. I'm getting the fronts done at Dream Science. 
I've changed the uh, exhaust uh, rubber on the CAT because that was knocking, I changed it to a poly one, but it's still moving in the whole system. So I'm gonna change all of the mounts for poly ones. Hopefully that's gonna firm the exhaust up and stop it from knocking. Uh, my near side drive shaft oil seal is weeping and um, it's getting a bit worse. So that's another thing I need to address. And these are just like the kind of things, you know, with the Mark II that will keep you on your toes. Things like alternators, you know, that kind of thing. When, when the car gets to 10 years old, they start to come to the end of the life and you need to replace them. I've, I don't know if you can hear the exhaust knock in there as I go around the corner. I've also got quite a lot of rattles in this car now, um, as I did mention earlier on. I've got one from inside the dash, which is quite annoying. And with the windows up and the music off, I do notice it. But to be fair, nine times out of 10 when I'm driving this, the windows are down. I'm listening to the exhaust and I just don't give a shit about any rattles. I mean, this thing is savage. <laughs> it's an animal, mate. It's an animal. Oh, this, I tell you what, this, this car, right, is capable. You think, oh, it's a 10 year old hippo. It's, it's, it's big, it's heavy, it's fat. It's getting old, but don't write these cars off because I think they will surprise you, particularly when you've, you've remapped them, done a few bits to them. They're very capable cars. I mean, I'm on my favorite road here, lots of twists and turns, and bloody hell. Yeah, very capable. And I mentioned the diff earlier on. Oh, the acceleration has uh, thrown my my mic cable out of the hatch there. I mentioned the diff earlier on. If you if you do pin the throttle mid corner, you really do feel the diff hooking up, and it, it slingshots you out the other end. And I think without it, it would be a great deal of a handful. I definitely think fitting the diff to this uh, was a well needed factory. It's not an upgrade, is it? Because it comes standard, but a factory uh, addition to the car. So yeah, my time with the RS, I'm loving it. I'm not regretting anything. I bought it expecting to spend money on it, to maintain it. If you, if you buy one expecting it to be completely problem-free, then you need to remove the, the wall from your eyes, basically. Um, yeah. That's it, it's, it's a second car for me. I've got my, my Focus Estate as my daily. <sighs> oh, bloody hell. And you do get the, the odd massive bang from the exhaust every now and then. And it just takes you by surprise. Not with a Mark III where it's just like a, a kind of a programmed in generic set of pops every time. This thing. Oh, guys. It's all personal preference at the end of the day. The Mark III, Mark II, Mark I argument will go on forever, which you think is best. But at the end of the day, we all have different needs, different ones from a car, and that is what it's all about, ultimately. Really, there is no better car. going to be quiet for a bit to be honest and let you guys enjoy the drive because oh god so corner here pin the throttle and it pulls you out and into a 30. Oh God. Yeah, it's just a very, very dramatic experience. Um, there's nothing, there's nothing subtle about this car at all. Um, you all know I'm keeping this car reasonably stocked, but what I will say is I do recommend that you, you get a cat back exhaust on it at, at least, just to unleash that five pot, that five pot soundtrack. Um, 
and get some decent tyres as well because these Michelins that I've put on this they've, they've transformed the way this car performs going from a set of budget tyres that are on the car to these Michelins it's a different drive I've got the window down so um, I'll give it a little boot when we get into the Nationals I don't know if you're just going to hear wind noise or not but see if you can hear the symphony that comes from the back of this car I think I'll drop it into second oh took off there <laughs> you get so much intake noise as well. Even standard, you get a nice, uh, a nice chunk of intake noise. But with this mount tune intake that I've got fitted, and the mount tune filter, it's just made it sound even better. See, what I mean, what are your thoughts, guys, on the whole Focus RS scenario, on the whole Mark One, Two, Three? Uh, do you appreciate them for their individual characters? You know, is it one that you prefer? What do you think about the Mark II? I'm guessing you like it if you're following my channel. Tractor in the way here. Oh! <laughs> I'm trying to make this video just as casual as I can, just to kind of portray just like a normal drive in this thing. Some people say to me, oh, get it out of the garage, stop pampering it. But as you can see now, when I do take this thing out, it gets driven properly. I don't nurse this thing around. It gets a good thrashing. And that's what these cars were made for. I don't see the point in not having it. If you're gonna take it out and just pootle around, give it some beans, man. Give it some welly. Enjoy the thing. Even if it does return you 19 miles to the gallon, who cares? Bloody more cyclists. I don't know if you can see them in this camera, but look at them. No effort to get out of the way. Oh, there we go. Slowly decides he's going to get out of the way. Oh, the two women. Let's give them some five pot sound. Also, a good thing about this car is you don't really need to rev it out. If you want to, if you want to sling yourself down a road at a good rate or not, so you can just change gear at like four and a half, five thousand revs, and just ride off all that low down torque. There's plenty of it there. You don't need to rev it out. If you don't want to stress the engine too much, just use, just use what's there lower down in the rev range. And it's actually quite agile for a big, well, I say a big car, it is, it's quite a big hot hatch. Have a cyclist there. But you can chuck it around. Whoa, big lorry, big lorry. Jesus. Yeah, you can throw it around a bit like you can a Fiesta. I hope you guys aren't bored watching this, but I like to kind of make, like when I was looking for Mark IIs or when I'm looking for certain cars, I always go on YouTube and I search for videos for that car. And I like watching videos where the driver is out driving the car and is, you know, is, is portraying like the, gen, the, the genuine feelings of how the car is making them feel. And it kind of gets me like stoked for buying the car. So I'm, I'm hoping, cyclists and tractors aside, that this will do the same for you guys, if you're out there and you wanted to buy one of these, I'm hoping that if you watch this video, you're like, yes, I want one myself. <laughs> right, I'm gonna take a right here at this T-junction. We'll do a nice little uh, 
a five minute stretch and then we'll call it a day. But I just thought that I owed you a video actually driving this car because I'm, some of you probably thought it wasn't actually drivable because all of the videos I've done have just really been static with the car. But yeah, it does drive, it is epic. <laughs> The attention this thing gets as well um, when you're out and about because you just don't see any on the road anymore. You don't really see many Mark II focuses on the road anymore, full stop. So when you see one in, in, in frozen white with big arches, you know, big 90 inch wheels, spoiler, it just looks the absolute dog's bollocks. It immediately draws your eye to it. And the amount of comments I get off people, oh, nice car, mate, or, you know, I went to, I turned around in, um, Little, little car park the other day and the security guy at like the front was like oh mate I used to have one of these like uh, six seven years ago a green one I wish I never sold it give it some welly you know it just people just love it and I think it's going to be one of those kind of cult cars in a few years um, that's kind of going to go down in history in my opinion is one of the best um, RS cars that have been made now the purists will probably disagree with that but this is the last of its kind. What other fast forwards out there now are like this car? None. I mean, the Mark III, we've got the four-wheel drive powertrain, but we went down to a smaller, weaker engine, the EcoBoost, you know, the same body shell as a normal Focus, five doors. This thing is just a beefcake, basically, a three-door, beefy, 300 brake, hot hatch. I, I, I just think it's the last of its kind. With emission laws now, sound laws, all that kind of thing, cars are becoming more tame, they're having to meet more stringent regulations, and for me, I'm just gonna hang on to this thing as long as I can. Anyway guys, two cars have kind of ruined the rest of the drive, so that's gonna be it for me. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed the video. We still need to cover the exhaust video at some point. I need to get cameras outside, do drive-by, so you can hear what it really sounds like from the outside. But when you're on your own, it is a massive faff. And every time I get in this car, I just want to go drive it and enjoy it. So I, I normally put videos off for the sake of actually having fun in the car and just enjoying the drive. But uh, I will get that done at some point. If there's anything else you want to see with this car, by all means, uh, let me know in the comments box below. Like I say, I'm off to Dream Science on the 18th. I might take one of their cars out to review the Fiesta ST, maybe. Not too sure. Um, so yeah, anyway guys, I'm gonna sign off. Uh, as always, take care of yourselves, and until the next video, I shall see you all soon.